Hey everyone, Santiago here from Kinova. Welcome to this fourth tutorial. Today we will be going through the visualizing in RViz tutorial. Just to recap what we did on our latest video, uh, we were able to run this first C++ MoveIt project in which we made our real arm and also our simulated arm move from a C++ script. And today uh, we will do the same. So we will use uh, we will run our script on the real arm and also on the simulated one. And what this tutorial does, it's uh, basically we will add some tools, some visual tools to Arvis to allow us to interact with our script and also get some feedback on uh, each step. So let's go ahead and open this uh, tutorial guide. And we will start with our first step. So the first step, uh, basically we need to add our new dependency to move it visual tools, which are which is the package that um, enables all of this, all of these Arvis uh, interaction tools. So let's open up a terminal and navigate to our workspace. If you remember well, mine is under tutorials, workspace, move it and the source directory. I will open it up in VS Code, but you can use whatever ID you prefer. And for our first step, we will open our project and open the package.xml file. And here we will need to copy our first command. So this one over here, uh, basically we are adding this new dependency with our other ones. If you remember well, RCLCPP is the uh, Rust 2 C++ client uh, library API and then the move it Rust planning interface which is the uh, package that, that allows us to interface with our real or simulated arm in move it. So now we pasted our new dependency, we saved, let's go and run our second instruction which is adding this find package uh, command to the CMake list file. So uh, this is for our compiler to search for uh, this package. So let's paste it over here with all our other find package uh, directives. And then we can, let's copy all of this block. And basically we're adding uh, this new dependency in this uh, CMake list uh, command. So I'm in target dependencies. Uh, so we copied this and we can overwrite it here over at line 19 of our CMake list. So let's copy it and paste and save. And now we will also uh, add the include inside our source file. So let's copy the command, go to our source file and add it to our includes. So now we haven't change anything in our code yet. We just added the dependency and we will test that everything builds fine. So let's go back to our terminal. Let's go back another level. And over here we will uh, type our build command. And if you remember from our previous tutorials, we, oops, since we built, since we changed on only um, our hello move it package, we will uh, only build this package. So let's add the packages select argument and hello move it. And let's run this command and I will see I will see you after the build. Alright, so now our build has finished successfully so we can follow our second step which is to add a Rust, a Rust executor to our code. Um, basically, a Rust executor is a new term in Rust 2. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, what this does is uh, it sets the way in which your system will handle all of the events, so the subscription callbacks, uh, let's say the services, the action servers, uh, the timers. Uh, so basically what you can do in Rust 2 with these executors is that you can specify how you want to handle all of this, these events. So you can handle them all in one thread. You can use different threads for different callbacks. There's a lot of possibilities you can do uh, depending on your needs. So I won't go much into details for this uh, concept because uh, it's not the goal of this tutorial. And uh, we basically just need it because it's the way that the movie 
tools, move it visual tools work. Uh, but I will add a link in the description so that you can read more uh, about this new concept and uh, experiment uh, for your needs. So let's go ahead and just uh, start by uh, running this uh, these steps. So for this to work, uh, we need to include the thread uh, library in our code. So let's add the include over here. I'll, I will just remove this comment uh, here. And we can also, this we have already done it, so we have already created our logger here at line 17. So if we want to uh, display things in the terminal, we will use it. Um, let's continue. And we will copy this new code uh, in our section where we, before our section where we create uh, the move group interface. Let me just copy and I will explain uh, what we just did. So we copy it here and basically what we are doing is we are creating a new executor uh, for our script. Uh, this is a single threaded executor. So as I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of possibilities here. It's not the only uh, option you have, but for this uh, specific tutorial, this is what we need. So let's go ahead and instantiate this here. And then for each ex executor, we need to specify uh, on which nodes it is, it's acting. acting. So um, we're adding here our uh, reference to the node we created in, the, in our previous tutorials. And then uh, we create our actual thread that will just spin the executor and listen for uh, any events that will happen on our node. So this is the code we just added and let's follow along and we will need also to join our thread once that uh, our, uh, our rust node is shut down so uh, we will just add this at the end here let me oops let me indent first this is a doubled command I'll just remove it the return zero also is double all right, so basically we're just uh, waiting. Once our Rust node is shut down, we are joining our thread. Make sure everything is ended correctly, and then we finish our script. Now we will actually start using the Move It Visual tools. So uh, let's go ahead and copy this next code, and I will explain it. And we need to paste this uh, right below uh, where we create our move group interface. So let's go back to our code. This is where we create our move group interface. And we paste this new snippet here. Let's indent everything. And all right, I will explain. So. Uh, here we're, we are instantiating a new uh, instance of the Move It Visual Tools. Uh, this object, like I mentioned, it will need the Rust node. It will need the base link. So this is the, uh, the first link of our robot. And it will need the name of a topic in which it will listen to the event, so to the marker events. So, uh, this is the default value. If you ever want to change it, you can, but just make sure that uh, all of the top, all of the markers are published to, you, to your new uh, marker topic. But uh, you can just leave it with the standard value, and it'll work. And it'll also need your robot model, so this can be accessed with our move group interface. So this is what we're giving it over here. Uh, the next command here, delete our marker, all markers. This is a, more of a good practice to have. So uh, we want to make sure that there's nothing rendered uh, from a previous run. So this command will just clear your scene and make sure that there's nothing left over being rendered that we don't want to be uh, rendered. So uh, we call this and uh, the load remote control function. This is what will allow us to control our script using the buttons that we will add to our viz. So um, here we basically are just initializing uh, our Move It Visual Tools. And 
then we can go to this fourth step in which we will actually create all of the visualizations we want. So let's go one by one. I'll start with this uh, title. Uh, again, we can just paste this right after our new code. So let's paste it and I will explain it. Oops. So in here we are actually creating a title for our Arvis window. So this is a basically a text box that will be displayed on top of our robot and in which we can uh, display any message we want so we will use it in this case to display whether we're planning or executing a plan um, so what we need to do uh, we need to uh, basically create a lambda function in which we will capture the instance of the move it visual tools we just created so that we can use it and this new lambda function will receive as argument a text which is basically a string that will contain what we want to display. And inside this Lambda function, we're first uh, computing the pose. So where do we want to put uh, this text box? Uh, by default here, we're just putting it uh, one meter above uh, the base link of our robot. So this is why we needed to specify the base link over here. Uh, you can try different links, but uh, this is a basic usage. So let's... Uh, specify one meter above the base link in the Z direction and then we return uh, this pose and we're also then once we have the text pose we can actually call this publish text which is the function that will actually display uh, the text that we want so we to this publish text function we give it the text pose we just computed the actual text that we're receiving as argument uh, which color we want. Uh, you have a different set of colors here. We, we will just use white. And uh, the size of the text you want. You can also experiment with these values, but uh, for this tutorial we will put it at x large. Alright, let's move along. This next bit we will create a prompt, which basically is the object or the command that will uh, stop our code and wait for a user input. So this bit of code will wait for us to click on a button before it can move on. And it's pretty simple so this prompt object is again it's a lambda function and it also captures the visual tools that it needs and it receives a text so basically uh, this prompt will display a text uh, in which you will uh, usually just uh, say your net, your instru instruction. So if we want to instruct the user to press on the button to continue, then uh, we'll give it uh, this text and it'll actually wait and display this text. And our third and last bit here is the trajectory toolpath. So once we have uh, planned uh, our next goal pose and we have a trajectory, then we want to visually see that trajectory when the arm is executing it. So uh, basically this is what we're doing here. We're going to draw uh, a line that will follow our TCP through the whole trajectory. So again, we do a Lambda function in which we need to capture our Move it Visual Tools object but we also need uh, the uh, group the planning group that we're planning for so as I explained on the previous video our planning group here when we move the whole arm uh, it includes all of the links and the joints from the base up to the end effector link so here we're actually with the move group interface we're getting the robot model then we're getting uh, a model group which we named manipulator and just a refresher for the Kinova arms there's two move groups there's the manipulator move group and the gripper move group uh, but in our case we want to move the whole manipulator so that's why we give it this argument and it'll also take as an argument a trajectory so when a plan is generated 
if a valid plan is found, uh, it gives us a trajectory in return. So this uh, is what we will need to feed this function so that we get a result. And then we call the move it visuals to function that is publish trajectory line, which will publish uh, a trajectory message that Arvis will be able to display. So this function needs the trajectory and it also needs the uh, joint model group here. So now that this is defined, we will save everything. And over here, we're just explaining what I did. So we are drawing a title, we are uh, creating a prompt. So this will block our code until uh, a user interacts. So until a user clicks on the next button. And the last one, it's just drawing our path uh, that we have planned for. So let's go ahead and follow this fifth step. And we will actually uh, add these steps to our uh, move code. So what we already previously had over here, we were basically uh, setting a target pose and uh, planning for it. And if the plan succeeded, we were executing it. So now we will add these steps where we will wait for an input and we will display our state. So let's go ahead and copy what we need. Uh, this we already we're already doing this so we are already defining a target pose and setting it to the move group interface and now we will add these three lines that I will explain before we create our plan so let's go here in line 67 or 68 and paste our new code uh, let's indent it correctly and let me explain. So here the prompt uh, command here, it's our lambda that we defined. So it will basically wait for an input and it will receive a text. So we're basically telling the user to press on the next button uh, so that we can advance to the next step of our code. Uh, we're also drawing a title. So we are telling our user through Arvis in which uh, state of our script we are. So we're currently in the planning uh, in the planning state once that we have clicked on the next button and this trigger function here is basically uh, telling Arvis to display now what we just uh, changed so uh, this is what they explain here so trigger uh, we need to call it each time we want to change something uh, rendered in Arvis so this is basically to save some bandwidth um, on all the messages that are happening and so uh, okay we we have defined our prompt we have draw a title and we are triggering the new changes and now we can go ahead and copy this whole block of executing and let's replace it here so from line 79 to 84 we can select all of this and copy our new code and let's indent it correctly and now uh, basically we just added uh, some of these things that we already did so the, the, the code stays the same so if we succeed our planning uh, we basically we are executing the plan and if not uh, we're just drawing a, a title that says that something's wrong and that the planning failed. Um, but if it succeeds, then we will draw the actually uh, plan trajectory. We will again trigger uh, this drawing. So every time we move, we will trigger a uh, a new display for the trajectory. We will also wait uh, here with a prompt for our user to tell us to start actually executing. Uh, the plan trajectory and once the, the user has clicked on this prompt then we are displaying uh, to the user in Arvis that we are actually executing the plan here we're triggering this new title and then we uh, are executing it as before so this is our new code and let's go back to the instructions 
we can now go ahead and build this so that we can test our actual code. So let's open up again our terminal. We will run the same command we have run before, so call con build, mix and debug, and let's select the only package that we have modified. Uh, let's run this command, and I will see. I will see you after the build. Hey there, uh, Santiago from the future. So just a quick note here: uh, when we ran uh, this build command, we're supposed to get this error over here that's telling us that this trajectory member does not exist on the uh, plan class, and with that we should use instead trajectory with an underscore. Uh, this is due to the fact, uh, if you remember from our first video where, where we set up our workspace, we changed our move it to branch to the humble branch because that's the Rust 2 uh, distribution we're using. But by doing this, we're freezing our move it version to the humble version. So meaning that we don't have any updates that have been made uh, from there up until today. And in those updates, there was a pull request that was merged on Move It 2. I have it open here. I'll also link it in the description. But basically, they removed the underscores uh, from some public members in their uh, in one of their of uh, their classes, which is uh, the one that's uh, complaining over here. So, what we need to do basically is just uh, replace this trajectory uh, with trajectory underscore in our code, uh, so that it. Uh, will build correctly um, so yeah that's basically the issue it's just the fact that this change was merged on the main branch but it was not backported on the oldest branch so that's why we're getting it now um, let's go ahead and just change it so we can open our code uh, I have already my search file open here the hello move it file and we can just go over here at line 84 and add whoops and add our underscore at the end and then we can build again and it should work fine so let's run the command call con build mix and debug packages select hello move it And now everything builds correctly, so we can go on and continue our tutorial. Thanks. Great, so now our build is finished and we didn't have any errors. So we can continue with our tutorial. Um, let's go and uh, execute these next steps. So let's open our terminal. I will just clear it. And we can uh, source our new build. And let's run our demo launch file, which will uh, activate, well, will actually launch our viz. And I will move my window here. So this launches everything that we have already seen. And uh, we're basically here, we don't need the motion planning plugin for this tutorial, so we can actually hide it. Uh, so let's go ahead and uncheck this. And we don't need it because we're actually doing all of the planning from our code. So uh, again, if you remember, this, plug this plugin is help helps us uh, plan trajectories uh, visually. So here from our viz and uh, see the goal states and uh, all of the other visualizations, but since we're doing this from code, then we don't need it here in Arvis. So let's just disable it, as they mentioned here. And then we need to add the uh, panel for our, our buttons. So uh, you can do two things over here. So if you remember, in our second tutorial, we saved an Arvis config that already had these uh, button panels. You can just load up that configuration if you wish, or you can just again manually add the buttons. Um, I will go ahead and show bo both uh, 
both methods here but again you can choose what you wish so let's start by loading uh, the one that we already saved so uh, let's uh, open a config uh, if you remember this was the path with where I put my previous config and I had named it my config.rvis so I can just select this and open it and let's just close without save here oops sorry it opened it in my second screen so now it has opened our previous uh, window and just uh, to uh, remind yourself we have our buttons here uh, at the bottom of, of, of the RVIS uh, screen and we would just need to uh, deselect this plugin and then we are okay or um, we can close this and start from scratch so let's go back to our terminal let's do a control C here to end our process and run it again alright so I have run it again this is my new window so let's disable this motion planning and let's add the buttons ourselves so we need to go to the panels menu and add this RVIS visual tools GUI so let's go ahead and do this so panels add new panel RVIS visual tools GUI and OK and now we should see our buttons here at the bottom of the page so now that's fine we can continue and we also need to add a marker array so this wasn't added to our previously saved RVIS configuration so if you followed uh, whichever uh, of the two methods I just showed that you followed you will still need to add this marker array so again let's uh, add it and we can do it by clicking on the add button here of the uh, RVIS displays and selecting the marker array so let's go here to the add option of uh, the RVIS displays uh, window so add and we were search for marker array over here so it's under RVIS default plugins just scroll down a bit and you will see it so marker array and we will open the marker array uh, plugin and we will specify which topic it should listen to and it's these RVIS visual tools so let's open it topic and it's not over there so we will write it and it's RVIS visual tools let's click enter alright everything is set up so now we will be able to run the program um, for this we will need I believe two terminals so let's open the one we have we will open a new tab we will always need to source our setup file and let's run our hello move it project so let's paste it and run it again so now we can see first that our code is blocked so it's waiting for an input we can see it with the log uh, the prompt log that we added in our code so it's telling us here waiting to continue please press the next button in the RVIS visual tools GUI uh, to start planning so if we uh, if we open our RVIS uh, uh, window we can see it here and then I will click on the next button and we will see a message here that will tell us that it's planning so this is the plan that it's executing all right now if we come back to our terminal it's saying uh, if you want to execute your plan then click again on the next button so that's what we will do and I will just activate my camera because for this first example we will do it on the on the real robot 
So let me activate the arm cam. Here we see my arm. Uh, just as a refresher, uh, what we did uh, on our previous tutorial that we haven't changed is that we went in our launch file. So here under Move It To Tutorials, oh, let me uh, just deactivate the cam to show you. Uh, so here in VS Code, under Move It To Tutorials, under Doc, Tutorials, quick start in our viz, launch, here's our demo launch file. So we changed these arguments so that we could interact with the real arm. So that's why right now uh, we will start by using the real arm, but just right after I will change these arguments again so that we can run the same example but with a simulated arm. So, uh, okay, let me go ahead and activate the arm cam again. And now we will open our terminal. Let me just move it so that you can see it. And it's telling us to click on the next button. So, Arviz. And once I click on the next button, we should see the arm move. Uh, let me do this. Do this. Let me just move so that you can see. So we can see that our plant trajectory was drawn. And let's click on the next. And if everything goes well, we should see the arm move. Alright, so uh, we can see in our camera that our arm is moving. Well, it, it already moved, <laughs> it already executed. We can see our virtual arm here uh, repre representing our current joint state, so uh, this is valid. We saw also our title changing uh, when we clicked on the button to the executing message, so uh, we got some, set some feedback from our script and everything went okay. Uh, no errors in our script and then our script uh, finish successfully so our terminal here return so uh, that's basically it for this tutorial and now I will see I will see you uh, in this next bit so that we can change our launch file arguments and execute the same code but with a simulated arm so if we want to do the same exercise but on a simulated arm, we will need to uh, go back to VS Code. So let's open it up again. Uh, I already have my demo launch file opened up. And we basically just need to, to reset uh, these arguments to what we had before. So if you remember um, here the use fake hardware, we can put it to true. Oops, true then the robot IP basically it'll be ignored so it can be whatever you want I'll just put a random uh, address but again you can basically be, put anything over here gripper it's still the same gripper joint name this argument we don't need it anymore so you can either delete it or set it to false and the degrees of freedom is still 7 so just with this we should be able to run again the same thing so let's uh, end our process here we will need to build again so let's run our build command so call con build makes in debug packages select hello move it and also move it now actually we just need to build move it to tutorials because that's the only change we did so move it to tutorials let's build it all right it's done let's source our setup file let's source it in our second terminal as well so that we don't forget all right so here on our first terminal we will run again and our launch files which will uh, spawn our viz so let's run it again let me put it here uh, we will need to disable again the motion planning plugin and we will add the um, panel for the button so here our 
RVs Visual Tools GUI and the marker array. So add RVs default plugins marker array and we change the topic. So it's RVs Visual Tools. All right. Let me just validate that name. RVs Visual Tools. All right. Okay, so we have set up our RVs and now let's open our terminal and we can run our hello move it script. We are getting as expected this message telling us to click on the next button to uh, start planning. So let me just move things around so that we can see correctly. Right, so let's put this over here. I will hide this panel as well. And I will just show the terminal. So we need to click on next here so that it can plan correctly. So let's click on next. Here's our new plan. Alright, so the planning went well. We can see here our message planning is still displaying. Our trajectory was uh, drawn correctly. And uh, now it's our code is waiting for the next command so that it can execute. So let's click on next again. And the arm, the virtual arm is now moving. And it should execute the plan. All right, so everything uh, finished successfully. Uh, just a quick remark: uh, if you can, oops, if you see our plan here is it's not the same that with the real arm. Uh, basically, the default planner we're using. Uh, let me just show you on this plugin. We're using OMPL, and this planner basically just uh, will find the first valid solution. So it's not guaranteed that from a plan to another it'll uh, select the same exact uh, solution because there's not always just one solution to a plan. Um, so it'll just select the first one it found. It, you're not guaranteed, even if it if you have the same start point and the same uh, goal, pose, uh, goal point, sorry, uh, then uh, you're not guaranteed uh, that you have, that you will always generate the same plan for both poses. So. Uh, you can play around with the, the planning library, you can also select different planners. Uh, it's not part of this tutorial, but you can experiment with, uh, with all of the available uh, planning libraries so that you can find what fits your needs best. But uh, don't worry if you don't always generate the exact same trajectory. It's intended and uh, it's not an error here. So, uh, So thank you for following this tutorial and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.